what is the role of finance in a nonprofit organization? Well, there's a lot of confusion. See, some people think they need to, uh, you know, not worry about the money. Let's just stay focused on serving people and God will provide. Well, others think this must be run like a business. So the tension of that is real. And I just want to share with you today that there are uh, five things that I think are critical and essential to the finance function of a nonprofit. The first one is, yes, we need good record keeping. You have to capture the facts, right? There's an eternal battle between bean counters and those who just want to get on with serving others. Uh, but keeping the score, it's a necessary and tedious task. Very important that you get the right people in the right seat on your bus, your nonprofit organization's bus. They need to be the kind that find it fun to keep track of all the details. Yeah, it's kind of anal, but for them, it's a game of sorts. So find that person. Stewardship is number two. And this is really about looking for efficiency and spotting opportunities. Um, maybe you could think about it as leveraging your spending so that it aligns with your values and mission's purpose. Yeah, it's actually inspiring, isn't it? We need to make sure that we're finding ways to maximize our impact while still minimizing our costs, managing them effectively. Third is financial reporting. Yeah, you know, in this game called finance, there needs to be a scoreboard. So the financial reports are like the scoreboard. And they need to communicate the financial stat status in a way that other people are going to understand them. Um, for starters, this is a balance sheet and an income statement, or a PL, as most people may know it. They have different names for these reports in the financial world, but I think those two work really well. They mostly all understand what that means. So don't stop there. Go beyond that. You have to move on to making sure you've got really good net asset reporting. You can uh, find some more articles and blog posts um, on this topic on my, on my website um, or on my YouTube channel. Um, also, you want to move on to true budget analytics, okay? You need a safeguard. So presenting this information in a way that others can understand it graphically, visually, with pictures and um, not just a bunch of tables of numbers becomes really valuable in the role of finance. Okay, the number four item is safeguarding the resources. When I say this, I'm talking about what some call checks and balances or formally internal controls, or maybe you know them as the separation of duties. Well, these are incredibly important procedures and they're really in place to serve the best interest of the organization. I'm inspired by an example that Paul provided when he and Titus were handling the offering that they had collected. In 2 Corinthians chapter eight, it says this, we want to avoid any criticism of the way we administer this liberal gift, for we are taking pains to do what is right, not only in the eyes of the Lord, but also in the eyes of men. So you definitely want to have checks and balances in place so that you are sure that you are taking pain to do what is right and to steward well those resources that they don't get stolen, lost, misused. Um, those are really important things for the finance function. And number five, the drum roll, please. Finance has to be moving to next level insights that are future oriented. See, unlocking actionable reports and these next level insights, it's gonna be what sets apart the nonprofits of tomorrow. Yeah, some are not gonna make it, some haven't made it. So if you wanna be, one of those that gets into the future and opens up the opportunities that you're dreaming about and that you feel in your heart called to do, you're going to need this data that is next level. Again, graphical, presented in a way that's beneficial, proforming situations, forecasting the picture of how things look, challenging the assumptions, rethinking the revenue. I had a situation this week that was so profound. One of the organizations I was working with is a school and uh, was evaluating teacher pay and was able to look at that teacher pay situation and really go, okay, what are the assumptions that are, are driving this? And one of them was the size of the classroom. Now, there's very important mission critical things about the size of their classroom. But the other goal is that they fairly compensate their teachers without increasing their tuition beyond what they can reasonably hope their families to pay. So as they began working with me through some scenarios and looking at what's possible and what might be able to be 
adjust it and tweak and could we go a little bit, but not too far? How could this look? They're now in some place of next level insights and they're gonna be making some future oriented decisions, predictions, up ahead moments that you don't wanna miss so that you're staying ahead and keeping your nonprofit in existence. All right, friends. Well, I hope you have all of your bases covered when it comes to financial management. Um, you've heard me talk about certain staffing, certain processes, and definitely, um, you know, different people that you're probably going to need on your team. And while I hope you have someone like me, a nonprofit CFO on your team, if you don't, I just want to remind you that I'm here to answer those money questions and would let you know that you can book a strategic consult on my website at any point in time. I'd love to meet with you and help you in whatever you might be facing at this intersection of your journey so that you can continue to serve the world with the things that you were created to do, the things that God has put in your heart to do and the people to serve. I hope you enjoyed today's post.